Good morning again, First Baptist West Monday. I'm happy to be here. It looks like you guys are too. All right, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you today to say thank you. Thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for everyone who is here now, get here safely, and bless the ones that are on their way. I ask you to give them safe and traveling mercies as they make their way to church. Lord, I just thank you for being the God you are. I ask you to, to bless the service today so that somebody would be touched by a song that is sung, a word that is spoken. Lord, I ask you to bless our pastor, bless our ministers, bless our officers, bless our congregation, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 You better pray. You better pray. Amen. You better pray. You better pray. You better trust you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. I don't know what you've come to do, but I've come to give the Lord praise today. Anybody know that the Lord is good? Anybody glad that the Lord we serve is good? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Not only is he good, but he's awesome. We serve an awesome God. Now come on, who can declare it to say? I don't have to worry. 
me from my enemies. Page 83 and 3. And 3. <laughs> Thank you for this day. Thank you all for the people. Lord, thank you for the love and good goodness. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. So I need to touch God. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Good morning, First Baptist. These are the announcements for the week. Today is Family and Friends Day. Let us acknowledge our guests by giving them a round of blowing your horns. On behalf of our pastor, Reverend Rosalind Harrison and the Fellowship of Deacons, we would like to welcome you and thank you for visiting with us today. We know that God has you in the right place at the right time. Trustee Chrissy Jenkins <laughs> would like to thank all the volunteers who assisted during Vacation Bible School. Your, without your willingness to serve, it wouldn't have come together. Today, during offertory worship, the outreach ministry will be collecting the cards of encouragement to deliver to the children's hospital. If you have cards, please hold them outside of your window during offer. Remember to join us virtually every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. for intercessory prayer and every Thursday at 7 p.m. for Thursday night Sunday school. Thank you to all who helped make the church picnic a great success. Continue to pray for all of our sick and shut in. Let us welcome back Pastor Harrison. <laughs> Thank you for listening. Continue to have a glorious day, and I pray you have a prosperous week. Come on, let the people of God say amen. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. To those of you who are joining us virtually, we greet you this morning. Blessings and peace be unto you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Certainly, we are glad that you are worshiping with us on this Family and Friends Sunday. If you are worshiping with us for the first time and you're in the parking lot, how about you just stand up and get off the side of your car and wave your hand so that we can see who you are. If you're worshiping with us the first step for the first time, I see you back there under the tree. God bless you. Thank you for worshiping with us. I see somebody waving their hand in the van. Amen. We are glad that you chose to worship with us today. And boy, do we have a treat for you. Amen. We are looking forward to what God has to say to us through our uh, speaker of the hour. Uh, Reverend Bernita Downey, our assistant to the pastor. We are excited to hear a word from God. I am ecstatic to be standing before you. I've been out three weeks, and I'm just glad to be back in the presence of the Lord with you all. 
Amen. And God is good and has been mighty, mighty, mighty good to me. Amen. You've heard the announcements. I am so glad that whether I was in my hospital bed or whether I was home recuperating, that the many things that are important to this church still continue to go forward. So we certainly thank God for trusting Chrissy Jenkins and her team for putting together and pulling off our Vacation Bible School this week. Amen. It was not easy, but we thank God for your faithfulness to show up when you didn't want to leave my side. So we thank God for you. Amen. And we certainly thank God for our picnic crew and all of you who came out to the church picnic on yesterday. The Lord certainly blessed us to have an abundance and we were glad to share those hours of fellowship with you. And so we just thank God that I promised Miss Wright long before 2021 came in that we would continue to do what she had put in place for us to do. And you ought to give yourselves a horn blow, a hand clap to know that we are still moving forward. Amen. Carrying out the business and the the matters of First Baptist Church, West Monday. Amen. You ought to be glad about that. Amen. God bless you. Listen, I do want to ask you if you would join us virtually tomorrow night at 6 p.m. We are excited, ecstatic, and elated to be baptizing, amen, Brother Christopher Hill. He's going to be baptized tomorrow night at 6 p.m. Amen. And so we're going to have the Zoom camera on, and we invite you to be present as we take Brother Chris under the water. Amen. As a representation to the outside world. We used to say it back in the 70s. Goodbye, world. I am gone. Tell my friends I am gone as we represent and connect to the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. So we're excited and looking forward to celebrating with our assistant to the pastor, her husband being baptized on tomorrow. And I wanna tell you another little secret that Brother Chris shared with me. He's been a Christian for quite some time and lots of people have tried to recruit him to become a member of their church. But it is with the love of Jesus that God planted Brother Christopher Hill right here at First Baptist Church West Monday, where he says, I am his first pastor and his only pastor. And I'm honored to share that, that title. Of God bless you, First Baptist Church West Monday. Continue to pray for your pastor. Amen. I love you with the love of the Lord. Come on, give our worship lead our hands. This is the It's offering time now. Will the following people come to the front? Javon Jenkins, Christian Jenkins, Xavier Griffin, and Cordera Tinker Jr. And then our offertory, our offertory prayer will be done by the Jenkins boys. <laughs>
our music selection from my own praise team. The next speaking voice you will hear is from Renita D. Hill. Praise the Lord. Anybody know him to be worthy enough? That's the type of God we serve. He's not just enough. But I thank God that he is more than enough for me. Not just for me, but for you, you, and you. Amen. So we stand and declare it today. Oh, no, 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 no,
Samuel ordered Jesse, go get him. We're not moving from this spot until he's here. Jesse sent for him. He was brought in, the very picture of health, bright eyed, good looking. God said, up on your feet, anoint him. This is the one. Samuel took his flask of oil and anointed him with his brothers standing around watching. The spirit of God entered David like a rush of wind. God vitally empowering him for the rest of his life. Samuel left and went home to Ramah. Our theme for this morning is God's choice. God's choice. You may be seated. In our focus scripture, we find the prophet Samuel heading to Jesse's house because the Lord has directed King, that King Saul's replacement is one of Jesse's sons. Now, upon arrival, Samuel greets Jesse, and then the presentation of sons begins. One by one, Jesse parades his boys as a proud father would to Samuel, thinking, well, this has got to be the one. But the Lord quickly replies after each son is presented that, well, don't look at the appearance because I'm looking at the heart. Family and friends, in other words, what the Lord is saying, there are a lot of people that dress Christian. They talk Christian. They quote scriptures like Christian. They hang around Christians. They go to Christian functions. Oh, they attend church. They work in the church. They lead church organizations. They sing church songs. They pray. They collect money and they even preach. But their hearts are not Christian. Their behaviors are not Christian and their tongues are certainly not Christian. They are not Christ-like. They don't love like Christ. And he is telling us here, hallelujah, that we shouldn't get caught up in what they do. We shouldn't be focused on what they look like. We should be looking at who they are. We should be looking at their hearts. Tell your neighbor, I'm God's choice. Yes, I'm God's choice. You see, just like you, I've encountered in my Christian experience in my journey several occasions where I have been overlooked, underestimated and undervalued because of my appearance. You know, I don't dress the way some people think a Christian woman should. Some people refuse to accept that you are God's choice because of the mistakes of your past and you know, the status or where you came from. Some people will reject you and say that there is no way that you can be God's choice because you are not qualified in their eyes. But the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 1 and 27, but God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things to shame the strong. So don't tell me about what the Bible says. Next time someone wants to tell you, you remind them that David was an adulterer and he was chosen by God. Remind them that Moses was a murderer and he was chosen by God. Remind them that the prophet Elijah, he ran away from Jezebel in fear and he was chosen by God. Remind them that Paul, the great apostle Paul, he was handpicked by God and not only was he a murderer, but he murdered Christians. And then there is Peter, you know, cousin Peter, the one that'll cut your ear off, the one with the temper, the one you don't play with, the yes. one that denied Jesus. Well, I will tell you that he was the rock that the church was built on. He was chosen by God. So don't tell me God won't use people with a sketchy past. Tell the card next to you, I am God's chosen. Yes. The Bible tells us in Romans 12 and 2, do not conform to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. That lets me know that there was behavior in the past. And then there was a transformation or a dramatic change in appearance or a character of a person. And because of that transformation, our minds are being changed or renewed. The Apostle Paul reminds us in Philippians 2 and 5 to let this mind be in you that is also in Christ Jesus. Yes. So don't let someone hold you to your past. No, uh-uh. Even if that someone is you. Tell that stronghold, and I'm not a songstress, but I'm not going that. I'm moving ahead. I'm here to declare to you my past is over. In you, all things are made new. I surrender my life to Christ, and I'm moving forward. They don't like that song. Tell them they said I wouldn't make it. They said I wouldn't be here today. They said I never amount to anything. They said you can never come back from that. They said you weren't smart enough. 
they said that where you came from, people like you don't go very far. They told you your daddy wasn't nothing. They said your mom ain't nothing. And they said because of that, you will never be anything. But praise be to God, they don't have the final say. We discussed this a few weeks ago, that every blessing has a burden attached to it. Yes, you are God's choice. Being chosen is challenging. You will lose sleep. People will talk about you. They'll do all sorts of things to get you. But our God, my God, my Father, Abba, Father, Jehovah, Jara, the power, the great I am, Elohim, El Shaddai, the giver and the maker of your faith, the finisher and the creator of the universe, the perfect one, the eternal one, the holy one, the all-knowing one, the all-powerful one, the one that was in your yesterday, the one that's in your today. And the one in your tomorrow, he goes, hallelujah. And just like he told Simon, hallelujah, in Luke, the seventh chapter, he said, listen here, let me ask you a question. When they were talking about the woman, hallelujah, that was washing the feet with her tears in her hair, the woman that was crying out to God, and I'm paraphrasing, he said, who do you think will love me more, the person that has been forgiven little, or the person that has been forgiven much? The answer is the person that has been forgiven much. You, my brother, and you, my sister, you are God's choice because he already knew that he could trust you with the assignment. God also knew that he brought you out of darkness and into his marvelous light, that you would run for him the race that is set before you. He knew that he could trust you to run and not be weary to walk. And not faith. So what? They doubt you. A lot of people are mad at you right now. They didn't expect much from you. They wanted you to fail. They wanted you to fall. They wanted you to tire. They wanted you to quit. They wanted you to need them. Hallelujah. But your help, all of your help comes from the Lord. Philippians 4 and 18 says, the Lord will supply all of your needs. Psalm 37 and 4 says, Delight thyself in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thy heart. Psalm 34 and 10 says, The young lion suffers hunger and want, but those that seek the Lord lack no good thing. So when those people want to remind you of who you used to be, uh -huh, when they want to remind you of what you used to do, you look your black body and stand and say, You meant evil against me. But God, this is for my good. Hallelujah. Look them in the eye. And say everything that I went through, every sin, every pain, every bad choice, it has led me to the plan of God. Hallelujah. And I went training for the world. What does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Glory be to God. So my first and only choice, glory to God. When you are God's choice, you have to learn to encourage yourself. I said, when you are God's choice, you have to learn to encourage yourself. I'm going to give you a quick overview. First, Samuel 30. King David and his men had returned back to Ziglag. They found it destroyed and the children and women had been kidnapped. He wept. His men turned on him. Did you hear what I just said? His men, they turned on him. His soldiers. The same soldiers that he had just came back with, the soldiers that was fighting alongside with him, his comrades, his partners, now they were his enemy. Just like that, people that say they love you, they'll turn on you just like that, and then they become your enemy. Some of you are so afraid of losing people, you're willing to deny the favor of God and quench the spirit of God on your life. You have been holding back because you didn't want anyone around you to think you feel you're better than them. You've been operating in mediocrity because you're afraid to operate in excellence because you don't want those closest to you to think that they are inferior or threatened by you. You've always been the one to take the back seat, you always say. But now God is calling you forward. But you don't want people to think you have changed. But you have changed. Hallelujah. You are different. You are God's choice. You have to place more value in the purpose that God placed inside of you and the plans that he has for you than the words of people who underestimate you. When you are God's choice, you understand 
that you are a change agent for the kingdom of God. Baby, your anointing is better than bleach. That blood can wash you whiter than snow. You realize that God's spirit lives inside of you, and that alone will make a double-minded person that's unstable in all their ways feel uncomfortable. That's why when you are around, people say things like, excuse my language. Um, I'm still a work in progress. Um, God ain't finished with me yet. The spirit of God that's indwelling inside of you will illuminate anything that's not like Christ. And those that are wavering would rather just not be around you or rather have you change back to who you used to be. But you can't do that. You are God's choice. When you are God's choice, you understand it's okay to be a peculiar person. You are at peace with being set apart. A chosen generation. You're okay with being invited or included on the roster. You just want to be in the number. God's choice is okay with not being on the guest list. We just want our name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Hallelujah. Family and friends, the safest place to be is in the will of God. It doesn't always feel like it. It doesn't always look like it. And sometimes you get hurt. But let me tell you something. When God hides you under the shadow of his wing, nothing or no one can penetrate that. When he brings you up out of the miry clay, no devil in hell can pull you right down. Hallelujah. When he says he's a very present help in the times of trouble, you know that you have been set free. And listen, all those assurances are to you because you are God's choice. So look at your neighbor if you're not afraid and tell them I am God's choice. People don't know your story, but they see what they believe is your glory. They don't know about the daily battles you go through, Pastor. They don't know that's about the warfare, the pain, the suffering, the mental anguish, and the challenges that you have to endure. They just see that you show up. Hallelujah. But God's choice. They don't know that this anointing, it costs you something. Glory be to God. If you don't believe me, read up on Joseph. It was his family that enslaved him. Hallelujah. Look at Job. His wife said, why don't you just curse God and die? Oh, why don't you just ask Jesus? Hallelujah. The very people he came to save are the very people that rejected him. And one day they were saying, Hosanna. And the next day they were saying, crucify him. Glory be to God, God's choice. Yet things have been difficult and truthfully somewhat unfair. In order to be res resurrected, you have to understand that you gotta be crucified. Yes, you have gone from sickness to sickness, illness and disease. Your marriage is in trouble. Your kids have lost their everlasting mind. Your money is funny and your change it's strange. God never said it would be easy, but he said you have the power to slay giants. You have the authority to make mountains move. You are a joint heir with the savior of the world. Now you know why Satan is working this hard to kill, steal, and destroy you. You are important to the kingdom. He knows the impact you will have once you realize who you really are. That's why he has all his heavy artillery aimed directly at you. You are God's choice. When you look around and no one's there, remember, encourage yourself. Go on anyhow because you make the devil mad. When they say you'll never make you say, though he's slain, yet will I trust him and the enemy will be afraid. When you say it's for God I live and for God I die, the dim demons begin to tremble. When you lay down your life, then and only then say, can you truly rise with Christ? You are God's choice. Brothers and sisters, when you are God's choice, you can expect people to talk about you. That's okay. You can expect people to doubt you. That's okay. Brothers and sisters, they want to challenge you and your relationship with God, and that's okay. They know in part the transgression that you have committed. But God, he knows the whole story. The one that shows you, the one that gifted you, the one, well, the one that said, you are his choice. You are created in his image. You are his handiwork. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are not your own, but you were bought with a price. You house the breath of God inside of you. You are redeemed. You are justified. You are saved from condemnation. You are forgiven of all you You have been given a new heart and a new spirit. You are Christ's glory and honor 
Lord. You are holy and blessed. Don't you know when the sun shines on your life, hallelujah, people notice. 
So if you do not have any covering, or if you are stagnant in your covering, because he didn't cause us to be the same yesterday, today, or forevermore. Hallelujah. He's the same. He wants us to grow. But if you know you're not growing where you are, we're not talking bad about no one. This house right here wants to receive you. We have a pastor that prays in season and out of season. We have a pastor that prays for you when she's not feeling well. Glory be to God. So if you would like to join this great body of Zion, please, this is the time where you can come and be a member of this household of faith. You can come by Christian experience, letter, or water baptism. You are just that important. Hallelujah. If there's someone that still would like to give their life to Christ, we have ministers that's waiting, we have deacons that's waiting to pray with you. Glory to God. Let us pray. God, we thank you. We thank you for your word. We thank you, O oh Father God, for your faithfulness. We thank you, O oh Father God, for your patience. We thank you, O oh Father God, for who you are in our lives. We thank you for the souls that have been saved via Facebook, Zoom, and audio worship. We thank you, O oh Father God, for those that have been saved in the parking lot on today. We thank you, O oh Father God, for the hearts that have been changed. We know that you're married to the backslider, so even if we fell short, oh Father God, you have welcomed us back in. We ask God that you continue to grow us, continue to shape us, continue to mold us, and make us who you created us to be. God, we surrender our will and our life, and we say, God, have your way. Lord, we thank you for our pastor. We thank you for strengthening her. We thank you for keeping her. We thank you for the word angels that are encamped all around her. God, we thank you for First Baptist West London, the officers and leaders of this great body of Zion. Continue to bring us together as one so that we can truly be that remnant that you're coming back for on that great morning. So, God, we thank you. And we say, Jesus, we love you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before his throne with exceedingly great joy to the all wise God our Father, be both majesty and to be both now and forevermore. And the people of God say amen. Amen. First Baptist, be blessed. Have a wonderful week. Remember to keep praying one for another. We love you on behalf of our pastor, Rosalind M. Harrison and Chairman Deacon Michael K. Brown. We love you. We thank God for you. In Jesus' name, amen.